So here we are at the Acton Women's Club May 1st meeting and it is a Cinco de Mayo theme.
to homes and do what we call empower hours. That's our home party. And then I'd love to do women's club presentations as well, moms groups, even children's groups. I do scout troops um, and real estate offices, as we were discussing with so somebody earlier, <laughs> and different things like that. So um, we have you know presentations that we can cater to you and your particular group of friends or family. So I absolutely love what I do, uh, but unfortunately, the company is necessary. And the reason, one of the reasons that it was created was because of the statistics, which I will just lightly touch on. Um, but one in five women are survivors of rape. So I don't know how many women are here right now, and I'm not going to count, so I don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> but this is uh, this statistic. These statistics have been, for the first few years that I was with Daniel and Defense, they were going in the wrong direction. Every time we would get any one of these out, uh, it was getting worse, right? So it's steady, and it hasn't changed for a little while, which is really nice <laughs> for the last couple of years. So we're hoping, you know, that we're going in the right direction, and, and what my goal is, is to equip as many people as I can so that potential attackers just assume that everybody has something, right? I want them to just assume that you are armed with your tool of choice and that you are willing and ready to take care of yourself and not be an easy target, right? So what I want to talk to you guys about today are ways that you can uh, go about your life so that you do not look like an easy target, <laughs> okay? Even if we're nervous inside, we have to pretend like we're not, right? Because, uh, you know, let's say, we, we've all, have we all been in situations where you're like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? This is so unsafe. And you're like, like walking like this, right? Can I see? This is interactive. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I call those my pre-Danzel days. <laughs> I mean, they still happen, you know? But before I joined Danzel in Defense, um, I never even thought of carrying anything, and my husband is a sergeant in all the <laughs> And, well, he wasn't when I started with Stephanie, but still, like, he, he joined the department while we were dating, and we've been married almost, what, our 20-year anniversary is in July. So it never even crossed my mind to carry protection, and not, it's not that I didn't want to, or avoided it, or was kind of like blasé about it. Never even crossed my mind. Didn't even know it was an option. Didn't know you could go into a store and buy pepper spray, okay? So one of the first questions I used to get all the time when I started was, can we just go buy one? Like, well, I don't know. I was like, because I didn't ever look, you know, when I first started. So when I first started getting that question, I started pro being proactive, but actually, I mean, yeah, I sell it, right? But I wanted to know, could you just walk into a store? Yeah, and then it's for sporting goods stores and things like that. Um, but then I started doing the comparison, and ours just trumps it like tenfold as far as quality goes. Um, and you get me to help teach you how to use it and explain it, not the 16-year-old kid at the, <laughs> the checkout counter. Um, bless his heart, but you know, they're not trained in that. They're trained in ski gear and stuff. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, so what I want to do is just kind of um, show you the different ways you can incorporate these into your life. And hopefully, I don't want to you to actually not have to use these products. Okay? I don't want you to have to use anything that I have. I just want you to have it in case, right? Better safe than sorry. So, um, does anybody carry pepper spray? Great. How about stun guns? I know those, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, anything else, et cetera? <laughs> et cetera usually means knives and guns and baseball bats. <laughs> so all of our products are less than lethal, just so you know. Okay, You may not care about whether or not your suspect dies <laughs> in a situation. Uh, some people do. We just don't want you to have to deal with that. So everything we have is less than lethal. We want them to let go of you so you can get away. That is our primary goal, right? Stun and run, spray and get away. Don't stick around for the show. You know, you may have multiple tools, but you don't have to spray him and then stun him because he can't see you anymore, you know? <laughs> you, are, you are on the side. Yeah, yeah. I'm funny too. <laughs> you are on the side of the law as long as you are using them in self-defense. But the minute, like, in jokes, I'm joking about that scenario. But let's say you really did that. Now you're no longer on the side of the law and protected by that. But if you're using it in defense, you are. Okay? And these work on animals as well, just so you know. They have, like, pepper spray. They have the same respiratory system we do. It's not going to kill them. Just, you know, I like to say that people are going to think they're dying, but they're not. <laughs> Leaves them with life-sustaining breathing. But so they can breathe, they're just going to feel like they're heavily struggling. Um, but we'll get into all that good stuff in a minute. We even have a line for children, just so you know. So if you have um, grandchildren or nieces and nephews, things like that, um, I'm happy to talk to you about our Safe Hearts line after. It's a line of storybooks geared at preventing sexual assault on children. The, the way the books work is <clears throat> they're meant to be read between parent and child together, even if your child can read, because the point is to make sure that they're on the same page as you. 
okay, that you know they understand the message, at least the first time. So but my daughter likes, she's now 11, but she still likes it when I read them to her because I think she just likes that we curl up and do it. It's like a bonding thing. But um, they're, I like to think of them as superheroes. They're a group of kids called Heart Defenders, and there's one in every book. And um, they, there's one in each story who comes in and freezes time, teaches the child how and why to get out of the situation and why it's important to tell a trusted adult. And then they do the right thing, and the Heart Defender comes back and gives them a Heart Defender match. Right? Makes them a Heart Defender too, because now they are um, knowledgeable and they know how to not only um, help themselves, but they can help guide their friends as well. Um, it's a really great, great storyline. So I love these, and we have them for varying ages. We even have a couple in Spanish as well. But I'm happy to share. Make recommendations if you do have little ones in your life. I would say they're probably good for up to maybe 14, and I say that because, you know, just because of the periods, I don't think that, it, you know, anybody older than 14 would let you read this to them. <laughs> but this particular book is between a middle school and a high school boy. Middle school girl, high school boy. So this is our oldest book, so to speak. Um, so, how many of you guys, and, and I think it's kind of a loaded question, because probably everybody, but we've all, um, through our life, been in scenarios like we talked about where you're like, you know, feel unsafe, you know, how, how, why did I come here, or shoot, you know, I wish I had something with me, or I'm glad I have something to protect me with, or something like that. Um, you know, whether it was when you were young, or whether it was yesterday, everybody, does everyone have some kind of experience? Like, yeah. Anyone like to share? Good. Sure. When I was about 14, I had seen a self-defense video mm -hmm. uh, in, in one of my classes or something. I don't remember. But um, it said, you know, if you want to get a guy, a boy off of you, if he's pressing too hard, press on his throat. And they had a few other techniques too. But I found myself in a situation where a guy was pinning me down. You know, it, it's like he was being a little more octopus and aggressive than I was ready for. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, 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 I'm not ready to do that. And um, he was. <laughs> and he was putting pressure on, so I finally got his attention by squeezing his throat. Mm -hmm. And then he called me a bitch and got off and left. <laughs> yeah, it's not that time. It's not that time. Words don't hurt. It worked. It worked. <laughs> so it worked. Words don't hurt, but thumb to the neck does. No. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> She didn't want to do it, so she shouldn't have to, and she shouldn't be made to feel pressured. 
Um, but the moral of that story is, you know, so like I said, telling your trusted adults, you know. And there's another one where she, a girl tells her mom about something that happened and mom doesn't believe her. So, you know, many people would just shut down right there and say, okay, must, she must be right, it's not true. Um, but instead she went and told her grandmother who took care of the situation and ended it. So that's really important that they know that, to tell their, you know, to continue to tell until somebody um, helps them, right? Um, but let's, uh, so yeah, so the situation you went through, uh, you know, that kind of scenario, different things common, uh, knock on wood, I haven't had something like that, but I have had what I call close, or, you know, awakenings, <laughs> you know, where you go someplace and you realize, oh my gosh, I feel totally unsafe and I don't have anything with me. What was I thinking, you know? How, why didn't I, you know, so, so having a tool doesn't give you the license to go down that dark alley, but if you have to go down the dark alley, there's no other way to get there, then you're much better off if you have something. Okay. Um, I got the pink. Um, the striking distance yeah, here. Striking tool. Mm -hmm. When it was shorter, and yes. I carry it with me when I go take the dogs for a walk <coughs> in the park. And uh, even though it's clearly close to your dog, the dog should be on a leash. There's a lot of people that don't, mm -hmm. and um, so I keep it armed and and at ready. I've never had to use it. But there's been times when I've just turned it on. Adapt it. And yes, and it makes such a god awful weird sound <laughs> that every dog's brain gets short circuited and they go, huh? What? That's the point of it. So we yes. want them to stop so long enough that you can grab your dog out of the situation. Right? So this dog? one here, and pretty much 99% of people that buy this are hikers and walkers, dog people, right? To prevent animal attacks. Because it's 16 inches long, it keeps you out of that bite zone. Um, you're less likely to get bit from the dog coyote. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if it would work on a coyote or like a mountain lion, or whatever, but I suspect they would respond more than if you do it. Correct, correct. And a lot of people buy it for that reason. The other type of person that buys it is just for home use, front door, back door, something like that. How does that work? Well, you want to jump right into stun guns, guys? Well, <laughs> well anyway, why I not? normally walk us, yeah. walk us there through pepper spray. Let, let, let them hear what it sounds like. So this is the striking distance stun baton that she is talking about. All of our stun guns have a disable pin on them, okay? So that if they grab it from you, it disarms it, and they cannot stun you, okay? So you want to think of it like a key, right? And then they have a battery indicator light on the bottom, and um, it comes with the attachments to charge it in your car and the wall, right? So one, they all have a nice little light on them, especially um, this guy is a nice, really bright one. So for if you're out walking at night or early morning, and then uh, all the way up to stun, when you see that red light, uh, that means it's on. And I'm gonna zap it now. This is what it sounds like. And when I'm zapping it, you won't see it, but these sidebars here are also active. So if you touch, I like to air demo this one, <laughs> so I don't have any mistakes. But if you touch these sidebars, or if somebody tries to grab it from you, they won't. They'll get be hurt. <laughs> Sorry. So this is what it sounds like. Ooh. Oh, yeah. okay. So, with all of our stun guns, you know, you want to use your big voice, okay? Remember when we talked about not being an easy target. What do, what do attackers want when they're choosing their victim? Easy victim. Quiet, maybe weak, you know, uh, like the gazelle, you know, you don't want to be the last gazelle. That's right. You want to be ahead of the pack, you want to, and if you can't be, because you're injured or, or have some reason or it's just your, it's only you and you were it. Um, have something with you and then what you can do, and I'll show you this with the other ones, but some people just walk along and if they're feeling unsafe, like they're in a grocery store parking lot or a parking garage, which those are in the top three places where attacks occur, um, your kind of spidey senses are just going off, something's not right, you can always, you know, as you're walking through the parking lot, like, let them know, watching that car somewhere out there, that you have something that's just, you know, because listen, the, the, the good guys don't care. Right, right. They'll be like, good for her, you know? It's the bad guys that are going to, you know, react. And you don't like <laughs> My plan A is for you to never get chosen, and if plan A works, you don't know it, because you were never chosen, right? So use it as an deterrent. But plan B is to have to zap it in the air. So this is more of a practical, this stun gun here. This is our get a grip. Because this one is small. This is like your daily wear stun gun. This one, or our new little ringer here that I'll show you. Um, <clears throat> so this has a really great walking light. And this is what it sounds like. Okay, so these are more kind of you can stick in your pocket and keep in your purse with you, right? But what you want to do is use that voice. Back off! Stop following me! Get away! Right? Let people know. 
let them know and anybody listening that you are in trouble, but you let this help you do the talking. You know what I'm saying? Do you want to know what this feels like? Because I don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, I found out one day. <laughs> Not in the hardest way, like I didn't actually. I wasn't. I'm saying I didn't stun myself like that, but I did come in contact with it. It wasn't fun. <laughs> but so you want to use these to your advantage, okay? So uh, I'm going to pass some of these around. Uh, I know we have a lot of you, so I'll stagger them around, but um, just go ahead and push it one click up for the light, all the way up to stun, and then hit that button. You're totally safe, okay? You just don't touch it, all right? There's that one. Here's our new little ringer. It works the same way. Okay, so I shut that I have
My problem is I keep mine in the car door mm -hmm. and I don't take it out when I go someplace. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember. Because it's only going to help you if your car's empty. You know? I know, but if, you're in your, if it's in your purse or stuff, how do you get it quick enough to... You don't wait for it to happen. So when you get out of your car, if you're, you know, you're like in this parking lot and it's not looking right, you know, you have it in your hand as you walk through. Like, like we were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, you just pull it out and have it in your hand. Now they come with a case, but I don't even keep mine in the case. I just leave it like this. I don't have to deal with the case. Um, and when you're, you know, walking to that parking lot, you can just do a little zap as you're going. They'll know that. Well, oh, let's wait for somebody else. Not yeah. You know, got um, groceries and you're pushing the carts and. Trying well, to you, and that's the other thing is don't overburden yourself. Ask for help if you need to. You know, don't. That's the thing is that a lot of times we're too proud to ask for help. That was me up until I was finally like super big with my last pregnancy. I'm like, okay, fine. You can help me load the car, you know? Um, but that's another thing, too, is when we're loading the car, that's another time when we are um, more vulnerable. Yeah, so, you know, you've got yourself, your groceries, your purse, maybe kids or grandkids around you, you know, what's the order we should put things in, right? Um, if you've got little people around you, you want to get them in the car, obviously, first. I wouldn't be worried about... Um, I would shuttle them in the car on one side instead of having them run all over and get in whatever door they want to get in. And you don't need to buckle them in right away, you know, just get them in the car, load the rest of your belongings, and then buckle them at that point, right? It's not necessary to complete the process of that first. Well, the comment that I wanted to make is I've noticed as I was driving along, a lot of people are distracted by looking at their phones, oh, yes, and they're, they have earphones in. They're not aware of their surroundings, and I think the same point goes towards when you're uh, loading your groceries or walking or whatever, that you need to be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. You need to look for people. Oh, for sure, for sure. And being aware is part of the situational awareness, right? Um, well, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, well, let's, I don't remember where it was, so let's move over here. Uh, so one time I was at the Target parking lot, I was doing something in my trunk. I don't remember if I was coming or going, but I was doing something with my purchase. And um, this kid came up on a skateboard and he, they looked like expensive jeans, you know what I mean? The whole baggy look and all this stuff, but he didn't seem to be needing money and I got that feeling, you know? And he skated up to me and he was literally like this close to me, but I was like, what does he need? You know, because you can ask me what time it is from over there, <laughs> you know? And um, so he comes up to me and I happen to, because I carry my stuff, had my, you know, pepper spray in my hand and stuff, and, and I looked at him, and he looked down, and he looked up, and he bolted. I'm like, well, that's really weird. Like, what did he see? So I, I thought in my head, like, what did he see? And I looked down, and I saw my pepper spray in my hand. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, so you have to remember you have your tool <laughs> as well, you know? Yes? Is it better to buy the pink one than the black one? I yes. Mean, okay, so one here's my, here, this is my thought on color choice, okay? Yes. First of all, buy... I always say go bright. If you like, the, if you're okay with color, go bright so everybody sees it, including yourself. If you do have to find it in your purse, right? But you want your attacker to see it as well. Like we have a, a disguised one that looks like a camera, but I kind of discourage away from that because I want people to know you have a stun gun, not think they're going to attack you and get a camera out of the situation, which is not a real camera, you know. Um, but if black is your favorite color and you would die before you carried pink then get black. <laughs> I would agree. And here, I have a friend like that, right? Because if you get pink, because you think you should get pink, but you hate pink, you will never carry it. It won't come out of the box. It's going to stay in your drawer at home, and it's doing you no good. Okay? So if you're, if you are like, don't like the colors, then you get black. Okay? Ladies, forget about being best in black. If you're pointing out at somebody, you don't want the cops to think it's a gun. It doesn't look like a gun. I don't care. From a distance in the dark, yeah, no one would be mistaken. There's a lot of people and the cell phone. Yeah, it's not the same. This one's the police won't be there. This is, this is before the police arrive, you know. Well, I know, but... <laughs> My point is just, like, I know people who think they need to do something because they feel that that's the right thing to do is to get the bright color, but they hate that and they end up not carrying it. So I'd rather see you have something. You know what I mean? And it's not, black isn't bad, it's just, you know, bright is better because people can see it, you know? And you want them to see what you have in your hand. You want everybody to know what you have. You don't want it to be a secret. So I'm kind of like anti the disguise stuff because I want you to not even be approached. Mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, it's very important that you uh, are aware of your surroundings. So you want to put your tool, when you're in your car, you know, set it on the seat in front of you or on the floorboard or, or wherever you are as you're loading your groceries. And it can be armed. It's just sitting here like that. And that way if something does happen, well, I can do that, right? Um, when, uh, 
And this is a good fear factor, let me tell you. So I've been doing this seven years, and so far uh, none of my customers have had to stun anybody because they use it as a deterrent. People ask me all the time, oh, so it doesn't actually do anything because I teach it this way, right? I'm like, oh, no, it does, but I don't want you to have to use it like that because now, I mean, we're, let's be real. We are at a little bit of a de deficit, you know, when it comes to fighting probably most of us. Um, maybe you're not because <laughs> you've got some, have some skill, but probably the majority of women. I hate to generalize, but, you know, I'm being real. And um, so I need something to level that playing field, you know. He's probably stronger than me, and he may have a weapon, so I need to as well, you know. And the police layer their protection as well. They carry a pepper spray, a baton, a stun slash taser. Flashlight. Flashlight. Anything else I'm missing? a weapon. Gun. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, we want to layer this out. So that's why the pepper, having a pepper spray stun gun combo with combo is a good thing because you've got your distance tool with the pepper spray and your close range tool with the stun gun. But if you use this as that deterrent, I can kind of act as a sort of distance tool as well if you have that kind of time. You no, know, given if he's not just surprising you and right on you kind of thing, you know. Uh, any questions so far? No? Okay, we'll keep popping out as you have them. Is there a battery on this on yes. stun gun? Yes, good question. So uh, you charge it, it comes with the attachment, oh, yeah, it's internal. So you just charge it once a month for eight hours. It doesn't actually die at that time, but you'll hear the crackle slow down a little bit over time. Uh, there's a battery indicator light. I just charged all of these <coughs> last night, so they were all nice and ready for you. And uh, so there's four lights, it's 100% charged, and they all have that. On the um, little ringer, I think you can see it without the, yeah, so this is fully charged as well. This one's on the front. And the little ringer here is a keychain type too. And this comes in our new uh, emerald color that somebody has, I think. And then uh, we just launched, I believe, yesterday or the day before, some pretty colors. Could you hold yours up? A pretty pink. Actually, these here. These colors here in the little ringer now come in a periwinkle and a rose. I love periwinkle. Yes. <laughs> I can see it. So it's really pretty. Oh, so gosh, let me real quick about the pepper spray because I see the clock is ticking up there. It's so, um, so we have two styles. We have the pouch style. Okay, now if you have this style, I don't want you to, like you said, wait till it's going down to get it out, right? Because it's oh, too late by that time. So you want, just like the stun gun, you want to have it in your hand. What I would do is open it up and just tuck it in your palm, and now it's just swipe left to right, okay? Just as fast as this style here. Swipe left to right. Yes. It sort of guarantees you won't hit yourself. <laughs> uh, well, all pepper spray is shaped like this. You just swipe from left to right. There's a little notch on it, if you could hear that click. That's the lock room, okay? And then with the pouch style, you also have the snap. And then with this one, um, you have the disabled pin, and then you have the same little lock on there as well. And I'll pass it through. Are you going to spray yourself? Well, yeah, I mean... No, I've never known anybody to. Uh, because, because, because you literally have to face yourself and you have to face yourself and swipe and press. Well, how far has it gone? 16 feet. Okay. Yeah. So that's the weekend after Mother's Day. So if they have enough to make it, we meet at 8.30 at the Arco cleanup. Station. Or across from the Arco Station. I only have one person so far who told me they were going to show up. So if someone else, you know, anyone else. May 18th. So why, why is the turnout so What time low? is that? Is it uh, <laughs> is a favor? Hi. Okay. Now we have some announcements. So the meetings come to a close and everyone's enjoying their Cinco de Mayo feast. There's some ladies purchasing some self defense items until June.